of your busy mornings, afternoons, evenings. We have about 35 nationalities registered for today. So we know there are people dialing in from Japan and Mexico and Botswana and everything in between. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I have the, the Dean of the School of Management with me, but first, before we get into the really good bit, we're going to start with a bit of practical housekeeping. So first of all, for those joining us live, you'll notice that you are on mute at the moment. Uh, this is purely to ensure that we have good audio quality for people joining us. It doesn't mean you shouldn't get involved. So we have a, a small army of people on the chat. So please get involved on the chat, talk to us, we can see your questions. I've got all the questions coming up on my laptop here. So get involved. This is an interactive session. This is your opportunity to ask your questions and get them answered. Um, some people will have registered maybe under a different email address. So practical point, if you've, uh, if you've registered and maybe your Zoom name is appearing under a different name than you registered for or a different email address, please update your name on your, your Zoom account because that will ensure you get placed in the right breakout room. Uh, we'll go through the technicalities of breakout rooms before before we join but again the moral of the story is join us on the chat if you have any questions the team on the chat can help you so let's get started please pop your your name where you're from let's get some of the interactivity going on this chat and, and let us know where you're joining in from and i'm going to start off with the man of the hour professor david oglethorpe who is pro vice i'm going to get my teeth in here pro vice chancellor and dean of the school of management Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Leila, and welcome to everybody. Um, as we know, there are people from all around the world, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, it's really great to see so many people here today. And please do ask as many questions as you like. It's a great opportunity to ask several people from the school any questions that you might have, um, so fire away. And we'll be answering questions throughout. The flow of the day is going to be that we will be having a chat with David first, We'll then go into breakout rooms to get some specific insight about the MBAs or the MBS, MSCs that you might be looking at. We'll then come back to, to David for a little bit about the future of what a Cranfield graduate might experience and the future of the School of Management. And also then more Q&A, but we can see them throughout to get involved. So I'm going to start with a, a more general question. Um, there's a lot of information on a website, a lot of different opinions. What do you think makes Cranfield so unique? It's, um, in a nutshell, I mean, Cranfield is unique. It's not, um, you know, it, it is so different to any other um, university. And we'll come on to this a bit later in terms of my experience of other universities. But first of all, we are postgraduate only. Uh, so we have no undergraduates. We are really focused on the postgraduate experience and we're specialists in the postgraduate experience. So it's not something that we've, we've developed alongside of other products. It is our, our reason for existence. Our teaching of postgraduate and post-experience education is what Cranfield is here for. And, and it's what it was developed for as well. Cranfield is also, without, as well as that specialism, Cranfield is technology and management focused only. So we're very focused on the, on the critical issues that face managers face leaders, but also we link with technology schools. So giving people that critical insight into how businesses and technology might interact, um, high tech businesses, how we can work entrepreneurially with technology and so on. So that notion of postgraduate, post experience, technology and management really sets us apart. There's another element though at Cranfield, um, which is why people are attracted to us and it's why people want to work for us as well is that we're close to practice and close to business um, whilst a lot of university courses will be very theoretical we look specifically at developing the practice element and making sure that people get the experience that they need to to be in business and to operate in business and to work effectively in organizations so close to business in terms of classroom experience, does that mean there's, it's just more real-world application, businesses coming in? What does close to business look like if you're a student? So um, there's a mix of things. First of all, we have a core faculty, but then we bring in external expertise into the classroom. So we bring in people from industry, 
um, many of whom are our alumni as well, who've been through the experience, um, who will bring in experience of how they might have built businesses, how they lead organisations, what the current trends are and so on. So that's an integral part of the taught experience. But we also do a lot of case study teaching. So we bring in a real world example and we try to apply knowledge that we might have gained, that students might have gained through, uh, through their lectures and through their workshops and, and work out those, uh, those cases. Um, we, we do, particularly we do some really interesting things with that in the MBA, but we do specific case study work within our specialist M M MSCs as well. So that really brings uh, the real world into the classroom. We also do um, a lot of study tours as well, where we take, we take students into practice to see real things happening. So, um, you know, a, a lot of the experience isn't just in the classroom, it's bringing the outside in. And, and actually, you, you're absolutely right on that. Only last week, I, I literally bumped into some alumni who were there for the MBA speaker series in the evening, and they were there talking through their experiences. I think there was a two or three alumni from one from 2010, another from 2016, and they were there sharing that practical experience. Um, your point about the, the case studies that we use, the real world application, it leads nicely into one of my favourite rankings that we have, which is actually around being sixth in the world for our teaching power, um, which for anyone who's maybe wondered what that's about, that is a ranking compiled for the Financial Times and um, it's a measure of how all the other business schools around the world are using Cranfield case studies, textbooks, materials. So the real world impact, it's actually being used at other schools and they're having to use Cranfield resources to, to teach it. Exactly that. So it's a, it's a mix of um, people using our teaching methods, our textbooks, our published case studies and so on. And it's no surprise that the International Case Clearing House is based at Cranfield um, because of that history. So all of the case studies that other business schools use around the world um, use the case clearing house that's based at Cranfield but being sixth in the world amongst tens of thousands of business schools for our teaching power so the extent to which we influence practice teaching at other universities is remarkable and um, a, a real testament to the quality of teaching here. And it's a real reflection of the global reputation that Cranfield has. And I know, you, well, you travel the world being involved in accreditations. You see our global reputation firsthand with other schools. I do. So um, one thing that students will hear about and will see about on our website is we talk about our triple accreditation, which is the, the, um, the globally recognised accreditations that business schools seek. So that's the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, the, the European Quality Improvement System, EQUIS, and the Association of MBAs, AMBA. So ASCSB, EQUIS and AMBA, we talk about that all the time. And I go around the world accrediting other schools um, that are seeking these accreditations. There's, there's only a handful, really, um, in terms of tens of thousands of schools around the world. There's probably only around 100 that have the triple accreditation. Um, so that marks us out as an elite school anyway. But when I go around, and I've probably accredited around 20 other schools, I've visited those schools to, to, to assess them for their accreditations, no one comes close to that level of practice teaching. Um, and that's what really is rewarded by these accreditations and the student experience within. All of those accreditations look at the student experience. They put the student at the heart of that. Uh, and that's what we do so effectively. Then you, so you've got the, those accreditations. We have another major accreditation of the Small Business Charter where we, we, we acquired the highest level of accreditation you can first time out. And again, that reflects how close to business we are. We do an awful lot of work with advising businesses. We bring business into practice, but we, we do a lot of post-experience education beyond um, the formal MSc teaching that enables that, that all to work. And that's reflected again in our rankings. And that we, we are very proud of our rankings, particularly the Financial Times rankings for the, um, for the MBA, the Executive MBA, and also our QS rankings for the Individual Specialist Masters, where we're consistently in the global top 20. And there are new QS rankings coming out, I think, in the coming weeks. So if people should be 
keeping their eye on those ranking tables. Um, but we have actually had some fantastic rankings over the last few weeks. We've had the Bloomberg rankings, which have put a second in the world for entrepreneurship. So that small business charter accreditation, it's obviously not necessarily part of it. It's another reflection of the entrepreneurial heritage and quality in our education. Um, there are some on the, uh, the screen at the moment, but um, I, there's some fun, fantastic ones. And one that really stands out, I think across all of our different uh, programs is our sustainability metrics. Um, we've climbed a couple of places actually extra. We're now 14th in the world in the executive MBA rankings that have just come out. Mm. Um, but those actually, those metrics, they might belong in the Financial Times rankings for an MBA or executive MBA, but they're actually university wide. They're looking at the university commitments to carbon footprint and sustainability measures. Yes, and I mean, this is something that's really close to my heart. I mean, I'm a, my professorship is in environmental economics. So I'm, you know, it is in terms of my subject area and what I'm passionate about, it's, it's really close to that. But there's, there's two really important elements to that. One is the extent to which we're incorporating sustainability and, and responsibility into our teaching. And we're signatories to the United, United Nations Principles for Responsible Management Education. Which, which rewards that um, embeddedness of sustainability and responsibility into our teaching in terms of content. And so our faculty have a lot of experience in this and so a large proportion of our content relates to those really current issues. But as a university, we're also walking the talk. And so as a university, we're deeply committed to 2030 net zero targets and we are moving rapidly towards that. And because of that, the rankings recognise both the university and the school's um, exceptional quality in that regard. And I think actually that ESG teaching that's embedded in the, the, the programmes, I think, for example, for the financial time rankings that you mentioned for the MBA, I think we're 36th in the world for that. So we are absolutely sort of sort of front and centre, I think, of leading leading the world. For we them. are and we have you know we, we have a dedicated group that, of, that looks at sustainable business. Um, we, we even have a you know we have an apprenticeship program in sustainability running with another school so we, we run a program in relation with, with the School of Water Energy Environment but we, we we are committed to it and and that's what you can't be committed to it and, um, and have the rankings pick you up on that uh, and we are you know as again within the top 20 in the world certainly in the top 10 in Europe for these metrics. So we've talked a little bit about the global reputation, the, the unique makeup that, that informs the, the Cranfield identity. What is it that specifically brought you to Cranfield? Because you've worked at Sheffield, Newcastle, Edinburgh. Why, why Cranfield for you? Um, part of it is the global reputation. Um, I think anyone should be attracted to Cranfield because of its global positioning. Um, if you get a degree from Cranfield, you are amongst the you know the elite of graduates and postgraduates in the world. Um, but the other thing that, that really attracted me was when I came here. You could, when you join an organisation, you actually go through an interview process. And I got to meet students and I got to meet staff. And there's something really stand out about both. And so the, the, the staff in terms of the quality of experience that they are committed to and the level of professionalism and that notion of bringing the, the outside in is deeply ingrained within the staff. And that really excited me. But then also meeting students and the dedication that the students give and that they can give because we dedicate ourselves to that postgraduate experience. All of those other universities and nearly every other university business school that I've accredited, there's a mix of undergraduate and postgraduate. And you don't get the same level of dedication of both service and delivery that you do at a, at a, a school or a university with large numbers of undergraduate. I can't emphasize that enough about what makes that the experience that special to potential graduates who are here today. And that culture, it, it extends beyond what happens on campus. It's actually part of what makes our alumni network special because we've got some amazing uh, historical rankings around our, our alumni. I think it was first in the world uh, when the Economist rankings were, were available. We were first in the world for our uh, breadth and potential in our alumni network. Um, what does that again mean to you? Because you've 
worked a lot on engaging alumni and, and bringing that to the front and centre of the heart of Cranfield School of Management? I think, I mean, the, the alumni body, which students will get to know when they come here, um, is incredibly powerful and it is that power and that, that persistence of interest um, that means that we have been ranked for the last three years um, in, in um, The Economist, which MBA, uh, for the strength and the breadth and potential of our alumni network. It's, it's, it's actually, I think, a reflection of the learning experience that students have that, that keeps them as passionate alumni. So the campus itself, is a, it's a beautiful campus in the middle of the Bedfordshire countryside, it, although it's only half an hour from London, um, it is a fantastic immersed, immersive experience. And that's what the alumni talk about, is the experience they got so rich and, so, uh, and that dedication that we have to them that they, they, set, they get this sense of belonging. And that sense of belonging doesn't disappear. And we have some incredibly passionate alumni um, some of whom graduated 30 or 40 years ago. And, and one of the other things about our teaching experience that you may hear about a bit more about later is, and this again is unique, is that we teach in learning sets. And so people become part of learning groups and you will become very familiar with your learning group and your colleagues that as you move, you move through the year, you might get different, put in different learning sets. But that, that becomes incredibly powerful as an alumni group as well. And we have, we have people who are 30 years out and they're still getting together with their learning sets so that when they were here. So, um, I mean, they're our best advocates and they're all just former students. And that's what students should be excited about. One of the, um, I remember chatting, I think this alumni was maybe last, a year or two ago from the MBA, but I remember talking to him about why Cranfield. Um, it was one of our August Prize winners for the MVA and he was saying that um, he joined uh, Cranfield absolutely because of the alumni network. He said sort of what people necessarily don't understand is they look at the education. For him he saw this number one al alumni network in the world as being the most amount of doors he could use to, to open and he got started on that alumni network right from the moment I think he'd signed on. He was LinkedIn in people and people who've been to Cranfield love to talk about Cranfield. One of the uh, the the things I heard someone mention the other day is being a Cranfield alum means you never have to dine alone. Yeah. Wherever you are in the world, there's someone you could meet with, and they would love to, I think, share experience with you and, and help you in your career. Yeah, and we we I mean certainly since I've been here, we've been very focused on sort of three elements with alumni, and this is I mean it's directly re relevant to students because. I think once you've been here for a month, you're actually a classed as alumni and you become part of that network. And we've talked about things that we can do for alumni, much of which is, is about the student experience when they're here, but also what our commitment to, our, to the rankings and so on. We talk about what the alumni can do for us and much of that is when they come back in and they deliver sessions for students from their business experience and so on. But the, the biggest area is, in fact, what alumni can do for alumni. Mm. And being the biggest network in the world for breadth and potential, what a fantastic network to be part of. And if, if the students on, online today wanted any reason to come to Granfield, it's being part of that alumni network. It's not like nothing else at any other UK university. It is, it is so exciting and vibrant. And, and such a massive asset to the students who will come, who can come here. I think vibrant's definitely the word. As someone who's often involved on the social media aspects, when we have rankings coming out, or we did a post about one of our fantastic professors, uh, Joe Nellis, recently, and the alumni went mad for it. They're, people absolutely still are engaged at, at all levels. Um, I'm just looking at the time. We're about to head into the breakout rooms in a section. And um, for... People have already pre-selected uh, their breakout rooms. Um, we'll have a, a chat in a second just about uh, the different breakout rooms and what we'll be covering. But uh, a point of housekeeping for those on the chat. Um, for those who already registered uh, in advance, you should have already put whether you're interested in the MSc portfolio or the MBA portfolio. Um, we're going to have a conversation now about which rooms people should be in. First, I would say if you haven't already uh, signed up to a room, do not panic. Um, stay on the call and one of the administrators will be in touch and you will be put into a room nice and seamlessly. 
if you have signed up for a room and you actually think, oh, in hindsight, I'd like to go for another room, um, again, get in contact with the administrators and they will put you in the correct breakout room. Um, and then if you can't make up your mind, um, do not worry, there will be recordings going out afterwards. So uh, go, for, go for the one you registered for, enjoy that, but you can always check out the recording as well. Uh, David and I afterwards will be regrouping to talk a couple of the, the best bits from each, uh, each breakout. Um, but again, please don't panic if you are in any reason in a different group than you expected. Just talk to us and we can direct you accordingly. Um, so people are going to go in a moment to either a MBA breakout session led by the amazing Dr. Leila Alanagan, who's our course director for the MBA, or they're going to go into an MSc breakout room with uh, Professor Caterina Figuera, who is director of education at Cranfield to look at the MSc portfolio. Um, for anyone who is unsure about the difference, or we talked about pre-experience, post-experience, what does this all mean? What sort of offerings do we have for different experiences, different stages of our careers? Which room should people be aiming for? Well, I, th I do think that it's, um, it's very important to, to particularly to signal the difference between the MSc portfolio and the MBA portfolio. So MBA, we are looking for post experience. People with, with um, good um, and suitable business experience, well, organisational work experience, to bring into the classroom. It's not just a qualifier, it's about so you can, you can cope with and you can deal with and you can contribute to and learn from the experience of the MBA. So that is our post-experience flagship course. And we'd say normally that's minimum three years experience. If sort of, it's a, it's a blurred edge sometimes between the two post-experience, pre-experience, but minimum three years is what we'd look for. for we tend year. to find people on the course with between say three and seven years experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, to, in order to for those people to be able to be, to work effectively together, they need to have a common um, a common denominator, which is that work experience. Uh, so the the um, and the MBA is focused on the person, on developing a leader, an entrepreneur, a consultant, or whatever. Who you know, in 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 terms of developing their career, the MSCs are all specialist, so they're all specialist focused on a particular subject area and they they will um, therefore attract people particularly who are wanting to move on from undergraduate study onto the master's level and what we call pre-experience it might still be that people have some work experience to carry into those MSCs which can be valuable but by and large if you've got good work experience that's valuable to the classroom we would encourage you to go for the MBA and the MSCs remain that specialist um, you know, area of study and it's also a particular area where we link up in so many areas with the technology across the rest of the campus so there's um, it is important that people uh, identify where it is they want to go but we can help with that that conversation and I think it is a conversation ultimately people need to find the right place for them and it's an individual conversation yeah. with with that in mind We'll get to the, the breakouts in, in just a moment. We have some great questions coming through. Keep sending them because they're coming through to me now and already questions about the next couple of years at Cranfield. What do they look like? These will be questions you can prepare in advance because these are coming David's way after the breakouts. Now we're going to head to the breakouts with Leila and Katerina. Please do stay on the chat, get involved, and we look forward to seeing you in 20 minutes' time. Welcome back. I hope you had an informative time. We are back in the studio, the amazing Grenville Turner studio. Um, if I haven't mentioned already, we are live. You can see real British weather. It is a myth that we do not have sunshine. It's here. And so it's, it's, it's fabulous to be here in the studio again today. Thank you for rejoining us. And if you're watching the recording, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that too. Um, 
I'd like to get started actually with a couple of the questions. The plan was to talk about the difference between what happened in each breakout room, but we've got some good questions coming through that I'd like to start with already. So um, the first one was, what does the next couple of years look like at Cranfield as one of the students? That's a great question. I mean, there's, there's, um, um, there's, there's lots of developments going on on campus and there's lots of developments going on in the courses. Um, first of all, the university has been investing in a whole load of new student accommodation. So the student accommodation is actually state of the art and, and really high spec, I have to say, um, compared to my student accommodation 40 years ago. Um, but it's student accommodation is a lot of investment going on, on there. We also have new courses uh, that we haven't necessarily talked about today that are on offer for next year entry. Um, we have a new course in banking, economics and finance and a new course in business data analytics. As well as that, we, we introduced new courses last year that are um, really starting to mature, like our, our new course in accounting and finance. So lots of new um, innovations in our, in our courses. Um, within what we teach as well, I think we're seeing a real increase in both, as, as I talked about our commitment to ESG, to sustainability, responsibility, that is growing within our courses, but also very cognizant of, um, of the use of artificial intelligence and generative AI in the, in the workplace, and a place like Cranfield should be reflecting that in, in our, our talk provision. So making sure that we're open about that conversation and how generative AI can be used and, and as a really powerful to, tool. I think the other thing, particularly um, that you've probably heard about in the breakout groups with the MBA, is how it continues to transform and improve. And uh, this year we have our, our new partnership starting with the SCP, um, where students will get to spend a month in um, in Madrid or in Turin to do specialist topics. Um, and having a whole month away classifies it as, a, as an international um, program, effectively. So that's a really interesting. Um, uh, innovation and we're seeing that across all, all, a lot of our, our programs where we do have study tours we have international experiences and we have internships as well so that's something that's new to the MBA but also some of our MSc programs uh, we can offer internships or we can look at um, uh, work experience alongside the courses so lots of exciting things happening um, and that we're committed to all about improving the learning experience for the students and the the MBA for those who weren't joining the uh, the MBA group. It, it has been redesigned. Some of the changes are already in place, but some of them are happening for the first time. So that ESCP month abroad, we say there's always been international opportunities in the MBA, but previous it was two weeks. This is now a month. There's a lot of other competitions as well. The internships that happened for the first time uh, this year, just gone, are now getting bigger and better. There's more internship opportunities. We've just added one with a partner in Japan. Um, so it's getting bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that really suits Cranfield. As I say, you know, being close to practice means we have lots of opportunity and engagement with industry where we can easily set up um, internship opportunities and we have some great relationships going. But we also, in terms of the student experience, we have some, we have some wonderful partnerships with other universities across the world. <clears throat> um, something that stems from our executive MBA consortium, but then rubs off across opportunities across um, when we're trying to develop um, international visits and things like that. So anything from Peru and Miami through to, to, um, to, to Japan and Germany, um, uh, South Africa, all the way across the globe, we have these opportunities and these partnerships that are deeply embedded in us. And again, it's <clears> another <throat> recognition of the international reputation of Cranfield. Um, I believe the Ember Consortium is very strict about sort of <clears> one <throat> school per region and of the whole of the UK, Cranfield is the school that is uh, representing the UK. That's right. I mean, we, you know, the Ember Consortium <clears throat> uh, does try to be, it's very discerning in, the, in its membership. Um, and Cranfield is the only UK university that's, that's part of that. Um, but that is reflected also in our triple accreditation, our international accreditations. A large part of that is our internationalisation and the extent to which we reach out to organisations and other partner universities across the world. As we've just mentioned the UK, I think it's a, a nice segue into one of the other questions we've received, which is very specifically about 
Well, we've already talked about why Cranfield, but why UK and why Cranfield? Yeah, obviously, if you're going to come to Cranfield, the UK question is the first the first question. Um, I mean, I would say, as I, as I said, I've evaluated schools across the world, and you see a variety of quality of education. And in the UK, to start with, all the universities are are effectively quality assured um, by by a regulator, and so that's why there is a sort of prestige and quality around a UK uh, educa higher education. But I will say that with with Cranfield, uh, I've mentioned is we are postgraduate only, so we're a graduate school. We don't have undergraduates, and I think you know part of that choice about country is also about the type of experience you want and. Choosing a graduate school for master's education is a, is a far smarter choice than choosing a university that offers both undergraduates and postgraduates because you're sharing services, you're sharing library facilities and all that with large numbers of undergraduates, whereas here it's all dedicated in a graduate school. So in looking for a graduate school in the UK, your only, op your only choice is Cranfield. So you're, um, so you're saying the career services are they're exactly. more used to finding graduate jobs, people at the right yeah. level, rather than yeah. I've, with and I've, I've seen that, and particularly um, in UK universities and in others, the the career service is focused mostly on undergraduates, and they don't attend the, the postgraduates as an oversight. Obviously, our careers for, um, sense service is entirely focused on postgraduates, so it's used to dealing with the postgraduate job market, and our employability ratings are really good. I think the third reason for for choosing the UK in general is uh, and Cranfield is. Um, you know, the government have made a commitment to the post-study work visa uh, and that will continue, I'm confident. Um, so being able to come to the UK and then stay in the UK to work is really attractive, particularly when we give you the skills to get a really good job. So if you have got a post-study work visa, uh, you're able to use a post-study work visa from Cranfield, your prospects of studying, uh, uh, sorry, working post-study in a good job are even better bringing all those things together. And thinking about the employability, um, we have to put this this conversation in context. We know the world is going through a lot of turbulence right now. Um, some people may think actually it's safer to stay in a job. Um, they may be looking at a number of different options. Why would, I mean obviously we've got an interest here in, in, in graduate management education, but why would you actually say now is a good time to invest? I think the job market is increasingly competitive. We know what um, the situation is across the world in terms of economy and so on. And you, you need to be able to mark yourself out in, in the job market. Um, now, even if you've got experience and you wanted to move on, now's the time to study to do that. Um, if you're, you haven't got experience and you're moving from undergraduate education into master's um, education again now is the time to do that because you need that competitive edge in the marketplace and getting a Cranfield degree with all of our um, rankings and our accreditation accolades and the quality of the experience the dedicated experience all of the services that we provide that are dedicated to, to those students it, it that all goes along with our global brand and reputation and there's something incredibly um, valuable um, and and there's a, a large amount of currency in a Cranfield degree compared to others. If you're in, a, in the job market and you are able to show you you've, you've got a good degree from Cranfield you're going to be above the others in the, in the market. And not to mention as well the alumni network actually what that means for job market potential. In Very interestingly we had um, uh, we had an alumni pub night uh, just two weeks ago, uh, so we do these things regularly. We, we get together with alumni in London or we do it elsewhere in the world or in, even in the country. And the number of um, alumni who were there who've hired recent graduates was phenomenal. So alumni will hire a, alumni. It comes down to that relationship. The alumni have a confidence in Cranfield alumni. Um, that is second to none compared to others who might be competing for jobs. And so we've, we've got this almost ancestry building up of first, second generation alumni working together. Um, and it, it, it really does pay. 
uh, to, to have that status. So standing out in a competitive job market globally is, is important. The Cranfield Alumni Connections. Um, that's all, all great for why now. What would you say Cranfield is doing to help people at a difficult time? We've got amazing scholarships. There's as well a, a discount on application uh, applications at the moment. Yeah, so we've got, um, and this is all going live on Friday. So to make sure you, <laughs> you, you keep um, well, watch on the website. But we're introducing some scholarships for, that, are, that are basically merit-based. So if you're a good student coming to us and you want to become part of that Cranfield offer, and and make all the gains that we're talking about in the job market there are really really um good scholarships available for for those students and we have regional based scholarships so scholarships for people in different parts of the world can attract scholarships and we're talking about significant fee reductions of up to 20 percent and many of these 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 scholarships which is i have to say knowing other universities is is unparalleled um, that also comes on top of a um, what, we, what we're calling basically the early applicant uh, discount of five percent to everybody who applies and pays a deposit before uh, the end of January. Um, but it's you know it's uh, in many of these cases if you apply you will get an offer quickly, and if you then pay, follow up with a deposit, you're guaranteeing yourself a place. And I do think it's worth reiterating those points because I've got a couple of specific no uh, notes that I'll just mention now. So the early application discount, the prices you're seeing on the website at the moment currently include that discount. So uh, if you apply now, um, you need to have accepted your offer and applied for your place before the 2nd of February. So you've got, you've got time, but I would say applying early always gives you the best chance of scholarships of accommodation of getting your network started so applying early is always advantageous financially for you and um, we also we were just having a, a chat beforehand about uh the financial support available and in fact you mentioned there's a, a cranfield alumni who's actually set up his own uh financial support opportunities for Yes, I mean, you, you, you mentioned before the Grenville Turner Studio that we come from. That is from a very generous donation of one of our alumni, um, Grenville Turner, who has allowed us to invest in, in this state-of-the-art facility that, that no, one, no other university has anything like this. We have a, an endowed chair by one of our alumni, the, um, the Simon Rowlands Chair in Transformational Strategy, um, which, which is, you know, again, it shows real confidence um, in us, in, in, you know, in our alumni. Us. But we also have alumni who've set up businesses that then uh, are helping the student experience. So Dan George, who is one of our MBA alumni, uh, has a company that called StepX, which can provide financial solutions to students who might want additional uh, assistance in terms of how they, um, how they finance their um, their their studies. Um, there are other There are other funders available, but obviously we're very proud that we partner with with Dan and StepX, and you'll be able to students will be able to find out details about that on the website. Absolutely, and you know it will be on the website already. But um, I'm sure uh, one of the wonderful people monitoring the chat will also be putting a link in there. It can honestly be a bit, I think, complicated navigating your options. So I would always say have a have a chat with us. Um, help people um, to understand what your situation is what you're looking for and they'll be able to give you um, not advice because legally obviously we won't be giving advice on financial solutions but we can direct you to a number of different providers that will be the right fit for for your situation um, so we've mentioned the uh, the scholarships available which I was told very specifically that the phrase is competitive and generous was the uh, the phrase that uh, the finance director was using um, we also have different scholarships available for the MBA and I think that's partly a reflection of the the offering is different but also we have more MBA fund sorry alumni funded scholarships in the MBA so um, we have some fantastic uh, ones which 
come with mentoring opportunities as well. So once you once you apply and you are one of the named alumni uh, scholarships, it gives you that opportunity to start, um, I think, be taken under the wing of one of our incredibly successful alumni. Um, so it's mm. it's an extra level. Again, it can be quite complicated navigating. So always easiest to have a chat. Yeah, I think I mean, I think it is something that will continually evolve is this um, this this issue about this thing about alumni giving back to the school and so the mentoring program is a really good example of that 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 former MBA students want to help current MBA students to to improve their opportunities improve their prospects and so on and make the most the most of their experience um, so there's there are lots of al alumni donated scholarships um, which students can can access um, but look, the, I mean, the main thing is we, the fee that is uh, that is out there at the moment, we haven't changed from last year. We we the, so the five percent discount reflects last year's fee. So we recognise how difficult it is for many people around the world at at these times. So we haven't changed fee from last year, and others will have will have increased. So that's available. Um, but there, you know, just talk to us. Talk to us about your options. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, we're not talking to 20,000 undergraduates. We're talking to you. That's, that's what we're here to be able to help the people with. Absolutely. We want people to be on the right course, getting the right outcomes, and it's a very yeah, personal... Yeah, we, and we'll provide the right advice for that. Fantastic. Um, you've mentioned alumni giving back, and it's a nice segue to a question that I absolutely love here, and I apologise for any mispronunciation <coughs> in names. Um, if you join us, you can teach me how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, but... Uh, Lindewi from Malawi um, has mentioned she's applying for the MSc uh, in Logistics and Supply Chain Management and she's got a few questions here but one I really love um, is how can we as potential students impact the university? Oh that's a great question and, and great choice for the supply chain degree as well. Um, the, the, um, one, of, one of the things that we, um, particularly some of our accreditations, they absolutely reflect how well the students are doing and what the students are doing within their courses. So we, there's a really, a really interesting development with AACSB, for example, around societal impact. And we really um, encourage the students to create social and societal impact through their projects, through their, their coursework and so on. So that's a great way that the students can, can impact us. Um, but they get lots of opportunities and through the student societies and so on, that um, they can make an impact um, outside of their courses for the university, um, acting as ambassadors for the university, um, helping with, with open days for students next time. There's just so much opportunity. One of the other things I really love as well is that we have a network of course reps. So if you're um, on supply chain, there isn't just one course representative, there might be four or five course representatives. And I like to meet with all the course representatives to work out what they would do to change the courses. And so you can make a direct impact talking to me, talking to course directors, talking to the rest of this school executive team about the changes you could make. Um, it's, impact is a really um, important word for us. So it's impact in, in what we do for the students and what the students can do for us. But also, we, uh, we, we often talk about impact in terms of our research and um, the supply chain area is a really good example. So we have, we have lots of externally funded research that we then write publications about that then, uh, that then other people that we dis disseminate to industry and it makes a change in the real world. And so we get evaluated on our impact, um, particularly our research impact. Um, we were we were ranked seventh in the UK on that at the last research assessment exercise, and we moved up about twenty places. So we we're, we're all about making an impact, and we love the students to make an impact too. Yeah, a hundred percent of our research was ranked world leading or internationally excellent in terms of impact. Yeah. So it's a fantastic stat. And actually, as a supply chain student, there's a fantastic <coughs> case study that I love on somewhere on our website. If you if you Google Cranfield supply chain and NHS blood supply, there's a wonderful case study of actually the the research having a real impact on the NHS in the UK. And it's a really, really cool story. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, 
from the, the same individual, Indue also asks, um, these are really good questions, so thank you. Um, what type of students succeed most at Cranfield? I think those that really immerse themselves in the experience, um, which we give them lots of opportunity to. Um, one of the, the real standout differences in the experiences that I've talked about is the extent to which we use group work. And I think we sometimes take that a bit for granted. And when I look at other, other business schools around the world, they're not, they're not, they're not doing this. And so um, if the student really put, immerses themselves in that experience and in that group work, um, that's how they'll benefit the most. I often say when students arrive here, <clears throat> and we've just been through induction week, the last couple of weeks for the new students who've joined us, I often say that joining Cranfield is a bit like joining an elite gym and you're paying a membership to be here. But unless you put anything into that membership from your own perspective in terms of your, your input, we, we give you the facilities, we give you the expert trainers, we give you all of the support you need. But unless you turn up, you're not going to get any fitter or you're not going to get any, any mentally fitter either. So. Um, it's all about how you immerse yourself in that in that experience. I think that's a really good analogy and, and one of the things I actually heard our commercial director here at the School of Management, Sarah Hatcher, who is one of our MBAs from, oh, I might get my year wrong, but I think it's 2016, <clears throat> um, uh, maybe 2017, um, I've heard Sarah talk to MBA students in their orientation week about being curious. This is a really safe environment. Cranfield the location of it, the postgraduate experience, it is a really, really unique opportunity to explore. You so rarely have the opportunity to pause, to explore, try new things, and it's a safe space to do that. And um, to be curious, I think the advice I've heard her give, actually, is, is to make the most of it, because it is so rare and so precious. Yes, I mean, another one of the quotes, and I'll try to make sure I get this right, is when I talk about when I'm in introducing students to the school when they arrive, uh, is a quote from Mark Twain, where you say that, um, you know, you will be more disappointed in 30 years' time by the things you didn't do than the things you did. So cut loose the bowlines, leave safe harbour. So basically get out of your comfort zone and really engage. And that's what students really need to do. And the environment is perfect for that. You know, this... There's, there is that safe environment to experiment, to learn, to try new things, to learn from others um, and really draw on that rich uh, diversity that, that we get here. I mean, you, you mentioned before 35 nationalities on the call today. Um, that's, you know, that's representative of the diversity of the Cranfield population. It is an absolute melting pot and you know, a, real, uh, a, a real great environment for learning. Fantastic. Um, I'm hoping we'll have uh, Leila and Katerina joining us on the uh, question and answer. Well, obviously, we've enjoyed our time with David. We're going to continue to enjoy our time with David, but we're also going to be bringing in Leila and Katerina to ask some specific questions. Um, one of the questions I'd love to, to field to, to Leila first um, and then to Katerina is going to be looking at the, the internship opportunities because career opportunities is, is front and centre of why people are looking at a business degree. So Leila, can you explain a little bit about what the internship opportunities are for the MBA? Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, so the internship opportunity we provide as part of the larger career development piece, um, especially on the MBA. So we um, launched a career development programme earlier this year where we kind of bring together all career related aspects under one umbrella to be able to kind of uh, support students as they kind of navigate uh, career exploration and, and, and development um, journey to achieve their post MBA career goals. Um, and as part of that kind of uh, program, um, we do have a career development and enhancement module, which is a credit bearing module that they complete from the beginning to, to term three. Um, and then they jump on a career pathway. Um, and we introduce the career pathways for, for students to be able to kind of get some hands-on experience in the world of practice and dedicate the, the time 
throughout the summer to progress towards the career goal that they want to kind of achieve uh, post MBA. So we have three career pathways, executive, entrepreneurial and independent. Um, executive career is for those who want to become, um, actually join an organization post MBA, uh, move up the seniority ladder and sort of take a more senior role or change industry function role. Um, and for us to be able to kind of facilitate that, we offer um, an internship opportunity for those who are on that uh, career pathway um, to actually be placed in an organization uh, for eight weeks, minimum of eight weeks, um, and, and, and complete a, a project and immerse themselves into that kind of um, um, environment. We really see this as a continuation of what they learn on the program, um, as an opportunity for them to kind of uh, put in practice what they learn, but also as a kind of a transition period for them to kind of um, stand out of the MBA experience and move into the post experience employment um, kind of um, role. Um, I think what's different about Cranfield when it comes to internship is the support that we provide for students to secure the internship opportunities. Uh, we kind of rely on the network that we developed over the years. Um, they've been talked about the alumni community. They've been exceptionally supportive for us to kind of launch the MBA program, um, internship program on the MBA. Um, so we go around the country and um, and kind of talk to the businesses. We're very much problem led. We want to be kind of working on relevant problems, what keeps managers awake at night. And we always kind of relevant, for example, around the time of Brexit, we had a lot of Brexit related projects around COVID. We had projects around supply chain resilience, for example, or employee engagement, kind of remote working. Um, so whatever's going on in the world, kind of fluctuation to supply and demand, uh, it's something that we kind of frame them as, as, as kind of an internship opportunity for students to kind of complete. Um, we work with a variety of organizations. We had a really diverse portfolio this year with the MBA um, students. Uh, we worked with um, consulting uh, companies, Tata, uh, we worked with Arup, um, Fisk Global, a fintech company, um, which was really interesting project. Um, Natural History Museum, so um, quite a different types of organization, a student being kind of placed uh, to work. And they um, need to complete a reflective report um, to complete the academic requirements of, of that module. Uh, and they need to be kind of reflecting on the experience that they had on the internship, their learnings, uh, the connection to the career development plan. And uh, yeah, so we had a really successful year and I look forward to uh, to see what we have um, for this year. Successful year is a great word for it because actually um, I, my understanding is 100% of those who wanted an internship got an internship this year, which is a fabulous reflection of the career services and, and how, they, how they're finding those opportunities, those real world problems. Katerina, from an, uh, a master's portfolio, what are internship opportunities are there in the master's programmes? Yeah, so um, similarly to the MBA, we also offer uh, some internship uh, opportunities uh, across different programmes. So um, students often have the option to do uh, an internship or in some cases also consulting projects. Um, so, uh, for instance, a student that will uh, decide to enroll the MSc in management uh, at the end of uh, the three terms, they will then, um, a little bit like what Leila uh, mentioned, they will have the opportunity to then um, undertake an internship with the, with the business throughout the summer, uh, where the focus is really about um, uh, focusing on, on an opportunity or a problem that the organization has and that uh, they will be you know very closely involved in trying to to address that uh, that issue or or in uh, in trying to uh, uncover that opportunity for the business uh, so very uh, hands-on opportunities in um, uh, with, with businesses um, in some cases for instance, in the case of the uh, supply chain management programs, whether the students pursue logistics or, or um, procurement, uh, again, uh, they will have the opportunity to work with businesses uh, and they will be undertaking a, a consulting project if they choose to do so. So some students will want to pursue the, the traditional uh, thesis, but others would prefer to have a, a much more hands-on uh, interaction with businesses and uh, and yes if they want to do so then then obviously uh, they can they can decide on uh, on uh, um, going for that that option so I would say that you know um, 
at the moment we don't have internships in all programs but we have lots of opportunities for um, students to engage with businesses in different ways um, one one other theme of, of programs that um, that we have the finance one uh, again we um, there is the possibility for for students to do um, internships um, what I would also highlight is that uh, in some programs you don't automatically qualify for those internships so a little bit liaising with what uh, or linking with what David said beforehand you really need to be committed if you want to to embrace the Cranfield experience you need to be committed and if you are a really good student if you can demonstrate that you can be a great ambassador for us out there you know in the in the real <coughs> world then you you would most certainly have an opportunity for a, an internship or a, a project with a, with a business. Thank you Katerina. Um, I'd actually like to ask a question because I think for those who may have attended one or the other they'll probably be thinking they've heard internships mentioned for an MSc, mm. they've heard internships mentioned for an MBA, consultancy projects, international opportunities and it's probably a bit difficult to figure out if you're looking at more general management where you should be fitting. So I'll, if I can start with you David as, as we've got precious time with you, um, what is the difference maybe between um, our MBA and a Masters in Management? Okay I mean the, the um... Well, the experience is different for a start. Um, as Layla's uh, explained, you know, the, the MBA has transformed into something which is an international programme and is, is, is dedicated to those who have the, pre, have the post experience, as I talked about before. The Masters in Management is, a, is, is probably a unique offering compared to other schools. Um, it's almost like a, 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 a pre experience MBA. Uh, it gives you a very similar <clears throat> general overview and it allows you to develop general management skills and leadership skills and so on. But it is aimed at the pre-experience market. Now that mean by pre-experience, I think I mean experience that is less than we would expect for the MBA. Uh, whenever we have people apply who have experience uh, um, that would be suitable for the MBA, we would expect to steer them towards that. Um, so it is important that people recognise the, the difference between the two. So to clarify, pre-experience could be someone fresh out of university looking for their first postgraduate experience, no work experience, or it could be someone with maybe one or two years experience in work, but three or more, again it's a conversation, but three or more it could be the MBA that's the best fit. For yes, them. and I think I think the you know we've heard about the internships, the internships on the masters in management um, would be different to the internships offered on the MBA, and so you know you would you you it would suit a different type of student. So I think we have to be really clear about that that you can come onto the masters in management with some experience, but we would expect those with with three plus years experience to be going for the MBA. Um, and Katerina or well, Katerina particularly might want to say something additional to that, but it is and it might it would reflect in the different nature of the internships on offer. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually Katerina, let's feel straight to you because I'm sure I'm sure you're itching to add a comment. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean yes, I would just like to echo what David mentioned. However, I would also like to highlight that we beyond the MSc in management and the theme around management, we also have other specialist MSCs. So for instance the MSc in finance, then you know the students would would engage in, in developing more specialist skills around finance rather than general management. So there are a few internship opportunities, but they would be very specific um, to the development of that skill set aligned with, with finance. Similarly, um, with, uh, um, with, for instance, supply chain management courses. So, so it's a combination, obviously, if uh, individuals want to, um, if they have limited uh, work experience and they want to engage in a, a general uh, program and, and undertake a program like the MSc in management, then yes, it will be the internship will be an opportunity for them to develop skills at the level where they are at, which is uh, relatively inexperienced individuals that perhaps want to 
uh, later on um, uh, go into a career in, in management. Uh, however, there are also some opportunities for those that want to go into deeper sorry, into deeper specialization of um, areas like, for instance, finance or supply chain or marketing, just and as an example. Absolutely right. And while you were speaking, I was reminded actually of uh, one of our most recent uh, uh, success stories from one of those specialist MSCs, because actually we were talking about impact earlier, the opportunity for Cranfield students to have an impact. It was uh, the MSCs for Management and Entrepreneurship who recently made it to the global finals in the Hulk competition, um, which is sort of, uh, they're a team of six out of 20,000 applicants, uh, guaranteed a thousand pounds, uh, sorry, thousand dollars investment in their business, which is all to do with sustainable fashion. So uh, I think it's a personal choice. It depends on the individual circumstances where you're looking to go. Again, it all comes back to having a conversation with us about the right fit. But the impact, our philosophy of teaching remains the same in every single one of those MSEs. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just to to emphasize Katarina's point, we do have you know, a series of, of, of very good specialist master's courses. Now, all of those, um, when people sign up to those courses, apply to those courses, they've probably got an interest in that specialism because of some work experience. So it's not necessarily all just going to be people straight out of university, although we do, we do call them pre-experienced masters. But ultimately, you will have gained an interest somewhere, maybe from your undergraduate studies and the the dissertation you did or something that points you towards that uh, that area of of specialism uh, and and we will develop your skills there but see when when it comes down to the internship offer we have them in finance we have them in masters in management we have them in the mba of a different nature we have we have um company visits and we have we have uh, business company-based projects that students can do on many of our courses so there's opportunity everywhere to suit the, you know, for, for, for candidates to have, go to the right courses. Fantastic. We're coming to the final few minutes now, so keep the questions coming in. I've got a couple more to answer <laughs> in, in here, but do keep coming uh, with us the questions because we want to get through as many as we can. Um, one of the questions, uh, oh, it's, a, it's a tricky one for David, actually. Um, so uh, why has Cranfield applied application fees for this year's intakes? That's from Ali. OK, there's a, I mean, there's a couple of reasons behind this. First of all is that um, many in the sector are doing this anyway. Uh, and also, it's a, something that our accreditors are suggesting that, that schools do. Well, what I've talked a lot about here is the commitment that we make to the students. And we get a lot of applications, but, and, but places at Cranfield are, are, are so well sought after, you know, and um, we have to make sure that we're giving everyone the right opportunity uh, and, and spending some time looking at those applications that we think people are serious about. So any university gets a, it's, it's like a funnel, you get applications and then we make offers and then people accept those offers and then they eventually come here. Uh, we get a lot of speculative applications of people who probably aren't committed to Cranfield like we would want them to be committed and, and, the, and deserving of the commitment that we will give to them. So it is a, you know, we are a unique place. We're an elite school. We are, we are globally accredited, globally ranked and so on. And so we want people to be serious about coming to us. That application fee allows us to spend more time with the people who, uh, in, in terms of talking to people about offers and so on. Now, your application fee, your deposit that you make, it all comes off your final fee anyway, if you're serious and if you come here. So it's not, it's not an extra charge, it's just an early charge. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and, and another question for, for you, David. Um, Sarah has asked that the, the rankings are great, but looking a little more holist holistically, are there elements someone should consider outside of rankings criteria when they're choosing a business school? It's a good question because we try we try to uh, make sure that in our rankings and our accreditation we're covering all the all of the aspects. But I guess it's the softer things. It's the you know, the things about the environment that um, you're becoming part of, and as we've talked about the Cranfield campus and environment and facilities um, of being you know being world class. 
But again, I would reiterate this, this fact that you're, you're not sharing the experience with a large number of undergraduates. You know, I was, I was at Sheffield and we had a similar number of master's students in the business school there, but we also had nearly 2,000 undergraduates and they would share services like libraries, um, like career service, uh, like a student um, and, and academic support services, like registry, like IT and so on. And because they're dedicated to postgraduate experience and the master's students and MBA students alone, um, it's just such a, it is a softer thing. So when we get accredited, we can get accredited for being a postgraduate school in the same way that undergraduate schools can. But it's that difference that doesn't show up in the rankings that's the experience the students have, I think, is the, is the big difference. Thank you. Um, I've got a, an, another great question here from Lindy away from Malawi. Um, and actually, I, I think you'll all have different perspectives to add to it. So if I can probably start with uh, Katerina. Um, the question um, is about what advice would you personally give to uh, a postgraduate student? Uh, you mean to someone who is already at Cranfield or, yes, or I'd someone? Yes, I'd say imagine they're at Cranfield and what, what, what would you say maybe to make the most of their year? Okay, well, I mean, I think, um, first of all, um, in order to, uh, to really embrace the full uh, Cranfield experience, um, be fully committed. Um, you may be at Cranfield for just one year, so make the most of it because it goes really, really fast. Um, so that's one thing I would say. Also, uh, be involved in lots of activities outside the lecture room. Yes, you know, um, developing your knowledge, your skill set as a result of attending the, the sessions, uh, collaborating with your colleagues uh, as part of uh, group projects, for instance, that's really important important, but also all the extracurricular activities that are um, offered to you, uh, embrace them because it's so important to actually take advantage of networking opportunities, um, developing those lifelong uh, relationships that often um, uh, occur as a result of your informal interactions with uh, with other students, with alumni, with faculty. I mean, uh, as as uh, Lauren and, and uh, David mentioned before, we have so many um, guest speakers, for instance, nowadays that actually when they, they, they came initially as students, then they were invited as guest speakers. Now they mentor some of our current students. So, you know, it's it embrace full all the opportunities. <laughs> yes, it is full circle. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. I, it's a great, great insight. Um, Leila, what would you say to, what advice would you give to someone looking to join the MBA? Yeah, I think for me, what's really important is the kind of the passion and desire to, to, to kind of a stretch and kind of get out of the comfort zone. I think that the desire and will to kind of, the far in you that wouldn't settle until you kind of achieve what you want to achieve. Um, and, you know, wanting, you know, the, the openness to be challenging others and but also be challenged. I think there's something common about the, the Cranfield alumni that that shared experience of Cranfield, that kind of that sort of open mindedness and and wanting and being ready to be transformed is something that's kind of for me stands out. Um, and then, yeah, once you're here, we kind of we, we support you. We have the right structures and foundations to kind of support you to achieve um, your your dreams. That's why it's called the Transformation MBA. Thank you so much. And then finally, the last question uh, to you then, David. What advice would you be giving? Well, it's similar to Katerina <clears throat> in terms of uh, immersing themselves in the experience. But beyond the school, so we have, well, no, within the school, first of all, we have uh, the Bethany Centre for Entrepreneurship, for example. And one of the things it does, um, which is unique, is that it has a seed fund for investment. And you know, if students have an idea about a startup business, that they want to, to attract some inve investment into, there's a vehicle to do it. So you, you can go to, all, go to all of these extracurricular events, learn about investing, learn about venture, um, talk to, to, to private equity businesses who come onto campus. But the rest of the university is a fascinating place. You know, we're pioneers in hydrogen flight. Go and learn about, go and learn to fly. We're, we have an, air, an airfield on campus. We actually have a, it's not, it's a, it's a commercial airfield, 
um, you know, and you can learn to fly. Learn to fly whilst you're studying for your MBA. There you go. You will, you will really fly then. We've got the marketing wrong all along. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you so, so much, uh, Katerina, Leila and David. Thank you so much for your time today. We're going to wrap up now. But before before you log off on your laptops, I um, want to let you know where you can where you can go next. We do have a number of different events which will be popping up on your screen in just a moment. Um, we have some course insight webinars that are very specific to different MSCs. We have events for our um, MBA. I would suggest we've got a, the next one's gonna be happening later in November, but that's a bit of a time away. So do get in contact with us on the chat. On our website, you can book in with Jen, with Helen, with Pamela. They would love to discuss the MBA and whether you fit there. Register for our course uh, course websites, uh, web webinars, my apologies. Um, we're also going to be in-person similar events. So for those who dialed in from Japan, we are in Tokyo in November. We're in Seoul in November. We are in Paris this weekend talking MSCs uh, at the, and MBAs at the QS event. Um, so have a look on our website, talk to us and make the most. Um, I would say apply now, apply now and secure your scholarships early, make the most of that 5% uh, early application fee, early application discount, apologies, and, and talk to us. It's your best chance of getting your scholarships that you're looking for and, and, and making the most of your time at Cranfield. I'd like to end by saying thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you to David, Leila and Katerina. Thank you to the amazing studio team at the Grenville Turner Studio who make us look so professional. And thank you as well to the, the team who organised this. So Tammy, Hannah, Claire, Helen, Cynthia, Linda, uh, Lynn, Lena, everyone on the chat. Thank you so, so much for being part of it. It's been wonderful to have you with us and we would love to see you at Cranfield next year.